Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Crowcast Tuesday Night Live. Uh, a few late scratchings tonight. Poor old Peter's fallen victim to his kids hiding his stuff. Um, and Nikki, unfortunately, uh, is in the early stages of a pretty bad flu, I believe. But joining me tonight anyway, we have uh, Macca. How you going, Mac? Hey, you sure that wasn't the same bloody bloke who stole my letterbox taking his bloody <laughs> earphones? <laughs> Could have been. Could have been. <laughs> And uh, coming back from a, a suspension, uh, we we try to keep this quiet on the <laughs> podcast. Um, you know, we don't try to air our dirty laundry in public, and we just try to let it slip through to the keeper. But uh, some pretty poor behaviour from uh, Magoo in the off season, and uh, he just had to cop a couple of weeks. But welcome back, Donkey. Yeah, no, it's good to be back, and um, I'm really sorry about uh, the offence that I've caused the podcast and everybody else. Um, I've I've thought about my uh, my actions, and I just want to point out that the substance uh, wasn't what you thought it was. It was just some sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you told me you haven't been drinking, Donkey. I haven't. I haven't actually been drinking. It's now I'm now, now day nineteen in Feb fast, but I've also not been on the piss for forty one out of the fifty days in twenty nineteen. So uh, I'm going to get a little weird, guys. That's how it's going to go. Impressive. <laughs> yeah, that I thought really that was newsworthy actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now um, apparently you like can wake up in the morning and the sun's bright and there's birds singing around you. This is lovely. There's, and there's so much time to do activities. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you are feeling the benefits of it, mate, are you? Yeah, definitely. I've lost um, I've lost 12 centimetres off my tits and uh, and about <laughs> and, uh, and nine centimetres off my guts. Um, I've also been whacking it up with wholemeal pasta in the gym. So it's all um, it's all coming up donkey at the moment. See, most of the ladies, uh, when they lose weight, they actually start complaining that the first place they lose it is off their boobs, but you're quite happy about it. Yeah, well, it just it just means I don't need that extra support when I'm running now, so I just, I'm just not going to have those back problems. So it's good. What are you going to do now is start running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that's the other thing that I've done to stop the pain from the running. <laughs> All right. Well, look. Thanks to everyone for joining us so far in the in the uh, in the chat on Spreaker. Of course, you can listen in and chat with us on Spreaker or Facebook, um, and you can also tweet in your comments and questions for our two special guests tonight. Later, uh, we have later on we have Dan Kylie and Kim Ryder, both nomination or nominees, I should say, for the single member representative position on the Adelaide Footy Club board. Um, I think that. When, when, do, when does online voting stop for that, Macca? Is it the end of the month? Or the I'm not sure. Or uh, it's not far no, away. It, it, it's not far away, but I think it's another week or two. I'm not sure. Hang on. I got an email this morning. It says uh, Monday, the 25th of February, 2019. So yeah. 5 p.m. Monday, the 25th of February. That's yeah. Australian Central Daylight Savings Time. For those listening in Darwin, that means you're going to have to be ready by 4 o'clock on that Monday. Yeah, That's both right. of you. And I think, you know, in all seriousness, regardless of whether you've already placed your vote or whether you're still undecided, uh, it'll be really good to hear from those blokes. And um, the third guy, Paul, it's Paul, isn't it, Eddington? Or Peter Eddington, one of the two. I haven't been able to get hold of him, but if you are actually listening in uh, to the cast... um, Give us a send us a DM on Twitter or a message on Facebook or something. Jump up and down in the chat, and we'll definitely have you on. Because the only reason we don't have you on is simply because I couldn't find you. Um, so yeah. we'd love to have uh, all three nominations on, but we have got two of the three. So anyway, well, look, without, in, in, oh, sorry, a little bit no. of spice for tonight. This is going to mm. say a little bit of spice for tonight. Donkey's vote will go to whoever the uh, people listening and participating in the chats. Overwhelmingly decide tonight is the best if I'm allowed to do that, or do you want me not to do that? You can do whatever you like, Donkey. <laughs> so it's, you it's tell me who season, you guys mate. think is the best, and I will, and I will, and I will award my vote tonight to that person. Oh, so we're actually going to endorse a candidate, are we? No, no. I'm just saying my one vote will go to whoever on the chat thinks whoever the overwhelming majority on the chat thinks is going. If it's split, uh, then I'll vote for my wife and put one <laughs> both ways. <laughs> right, and on that note, let's get into some news. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? 
we've uh, it's been a reasonably quiet week on uh, the news front this week. Uh, oh yes, going but it's going to get exciting though, Fiend. We've got AFLX <laughs> on Friday, and Doggy is really ready to go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, if you whoever's listening, Doggy actually loves the A the AFLX. Well, um, uh, that's a handball. Uh, <laughs> look, you're running. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, you're ready for look that. Out last year, last year, <laughs> last year, I was very excited watching some Crows boys running around, watching, um, you know, watching, getting to have a first look at players like Tom Boudet and uh, and what they had to go on, and and uh, and I was excited about seeing that. And then, you know, Cole Chaney, Premiership captain. You know, there was a lot to be a lot to be excited about. Um, wasn't necessarily. Too impressed with the revised format that um, that uh, uh, is there some weird stuff happening in the um, background there? That's that's Pete uh, that's just come on and he's uh, alerted us to his presence with a bit of uh, trademark heavy breathing. Nice to see yes. you. Yes. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. And yeah, I'm very lucky to be here tonight. Um, I had an absolute tech massive tech failure, but fortunately, I had what every adult needs, and that's a ten year old to. Um, <laughs> to actually get it all sorted out for me. So um, the lost headphones didn't matter in the end. Um, my 10-year-old had the genius idea of actually getting the alternative device. Uh, uh, welcome, Pete. Like so there we go. That wasn't Very actually good. that hard to solve. Very good. You saved us, mate. You saved us. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Thanks, we, mate. We, we, yeah, back to, back to Magoo. Uh, AFLX, mate, it's what I've seen so far. It's just a uh, been a decimation of the team list leading up to the, the big night. Yeah, look, um, it's it's well documented and well known the the rigors that AFL put, X puts upon a player's body and as being the pinnacle of the season and what players are supposed to get to, and uh, some players that just don't have enough ticker have uh, pulled out already. I saw a couple of Hawthorne boys are out. Robbie Gray um, saving his ticker for the season. Um, he's going to have he's got a lot to do this year. Robbie Gray without Pollock and Wingard, so that's sort of a bit understandable. Uh, Tom Rockliffe's come in in Robbie Gray's place, so. Uh, he'll be looking to remember what kicking the ball's like. Um, that's, that's I think he forgot cut. last year. Yeah. No. So, so uh, he'll benefit yeah, from the gonna, smaller ground. Two of the Hawthorne boys. Rockwell. That is. Yeah, they lost uh, Smith and and one of the other boys. Can't remember. <laughs> nah, it's um, it's uh, it's one of these ones where uh, this could this could be something. I reckon um, the format's too. <laughs> it's going to be something. It's probably it's. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm looking forward to the your 30 point super dupers from you know outside the pie floater or whatever they call it. You know, they, they've they've seriously just gimmicked this up to the point where it's unwatchable. And even someone like me that was actually kind of excited about watching it last year has absolutely no interest in it this year. It's it's disgraceful. AFL, you should hang your head in shame. You have buggered this up to the point where it is comically bad. It has no appeal to anybody. It's a waste of everybody's time. Everyone would be better served with an extra week of JLT. You have absolutely knocked this on the nolly. Gil, you're an idiot. Knock this yeah, on the I'll nolly. But I'll tell you what, there, there is one big thing going on here that has not been mentioned publicly, and I don't know why. But if Cam Ellis yolman's team wins, he is a dual AFL X Premiership player, and he'll be the only one in history. Sorry, that was if me. That's not, if, that, if that's not big, Maybe mate. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so interested What's in what you've got to say, Macker. I want to hear you twice. Go on. That was just yeah. me being an idiot. No, I'm just saying about Cam Miller's yeoman. If he, yeah. if he, having one got one under his belt already. I actually put that up on Twitter and I got one like it. It was from Cam Miller's yeoman. <laughs> 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 I think his mum runs his account, doesn't he? Doesn't she? <laughs> Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, but I've got a like for it, didn't you? <laughs> well, that'd be amazing if Cam can follow... Oh, I'm not going to... I was going to sleep you. I know you say that. <laughs> well, of course, you know, in, in related news to that, of course, we have uh, maybe the beginning of, of what is the likely career path from AFLX because Kyle Chaney's now signed for Handorf. Um So perhaps you go from <laughs> AFLX Premiership Captain to uh, Handorf Ringing. Oh yeah, but and they'll do it like the um, do it like the BBL. It won't be Adelaide Crows. It'll be like the Handorf Ratsworth versus the uh, the uh, Semaphore. I don't know what are you doing at Semaphore? Ice creams. You swim at Semaphore. The Semaphore oh. swimmers. 
Yeah, I used to catch Tommy Ruff there. Is that well, where the, I caught Tommy Ruff as a kid? Uh, the seven four seaman, maybe. There's a lot of boating oh, goes right, on down right, there. Right, right, Be right. careful how you pronounce that, Fiend. Yeah, yeah S E A M E N seaman boating people, <laughs> yeah. of course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, that's enough. We've we've crapped on about AFLX for three weeks now, and. Uh, I think the, the AFL don't deserve the airtime we've given it. Needless to say, it's going to be a non-event. PJ Crows in the chat was saying that uh, his mate, the PE teacher, was given 500 free tickets uh, to hand out to his kids for the AFLX. Uh, so you can bet your life that uh, if you if you actually go to the AFLX and you've paid to get in, you've been ripped off. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Now what's happening down Stay at the tuned, though, for any, uh, for any US cable TV network who will be sure to be picking this up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not even much going on down at, um, at Adelaide at the moment. It's been very quiet this week. Um, obviously, you know, uh, the under-23s game coming up soon and uh, a bit of buzz around the AFLW team, and we'll talk about that in more detail in a little moment. Um, yeah, a little, a little bit of talk about three of the players in um, uh, Darcy Fogarty. There's talk that he's been uh, being uh, doing a lot of his time uh, training in the back lines this uh, season so far. That uh, on the basis that they think he's too good not to be in the side, and yet they, uh, the forward lines already started with height. When you when you look take into account the the, guy, the three guys are already up there, so um, it looks like you know Fogs could be. Uh, they want him in the side, and he, and, they, and they could well be as a backman, and and that, that puts a little bit of strain on uh, blokes like Hardigan, etc., as well, because you only have so many tools in the back line as well. So, yeah, well, uh, I don't know whether Hardigan's actually going to start, because um, he is. I mean, he is fit now apparently, but he's a bit behind in uh, in his training after after a bit of a uh, bit of injury trouble in the off season. So maybe Fogarty starts. Uh, in one of the key, I mean, we've got Alex Keith as well. Um, That's it, exactly. Sport and, for choice at the moment. Yep, uh, Jacobs, um, uh, you know, Riley O'Brien, he's making noises like I want his spot. And, and uh, Jacob says he'd be delighted to see him take his spot, but not this year. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, uh, so there's well, inter- in- interestingly, Sam, on the, the news site said that um, he was quite uh, vocal in the fact that the we might struggle to be able to carry two Ruckman now. With the new rules, which was uh, interesting because uh, um, uh, oh, who was the guy that Port picked up from West Coast? He was mm. interviewed today as well. Lysett. Lysett, yeah. L- Lysett said it would uh, it would really suit the two Ruckman, but uh, it was just interesting that with all the talk of uh, O'Brien pushing um, Source, that uh, Source came out today and said, look, probably not going to be room for two Ruckman in the team. So uh, probably just firing a shot back there, I imagine. Ooh. Yeah. But it's horses for courses, isn't it? Because uh, Port Adelaide haven't got three big forwards up forward. So, uh, and both those two ruckmen that they've got in Ryder and Lyset can actually uh, sit in the forward pocket and take a grab. So, it, you know, it can suit Port Adelaide. I can see that. It, don't, it won't suit us. So, uh, it'll, it'll probably only suit be... Uh, if they had if they had two decent ruckmen. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I don't think Lyset's too bad a ruckman at all. I, oh, you know, he had... No, good average ruckman, I reckon. Well, he's a... Uh, I think he's a AFL standard. I'm not saying he's a, a star, but um, with Dan Anui unavailable for most of the year, he had to do most of the work last year and then, um, well, ended up getting into a grand final and a flag. So, he, you know, he's done a reasonable job. Yeah. Uh, what do we think well, of Dixon sources? Down, they, might have, they might have to recruit another key forward or they might have to send another Ruckman down there and recruit another Ruckman. Mm. They're talking about using the EBIT in a, in a key forward post this year That's an I, interesting one. I'm struggling with that one I mean you know, talk about do you need speed up forward and oh. Ebert, Ebert would be the slowest bloke in their side Port have lost the plot like they've actually like they've lost the plot for over the last couple of seasons with their recruiting who they've let go and all the things they're trying to do they've lost the plot well they've lost speed yeah well apparently they had uh, and let's not turn this into the Port show but apparently they had between six and eight hundred at their little members convention at the beginning of the season uh, last week, uh, Ken wrapped, uh, you know, wrapped away at uh, at uh, what they're going to do for the season. Apparently, it's going to be fast and furious for Port Adelaide, and uh, you know, all the all the uh, members drank the Kool Aid, but uh, charged them. <laughs> I think they charged them seventy bucks each or something or other to go to the 
the thing to listen to Kosh and Hinkley crap on. Uh, I, I, did, I did the math on this. So they claim they made $75,000 at that event. And if they reckon they had 600 people, that should have been $141 per person if you add on a few things to the event. They just, they just talk at their ass the entire time. This is nothing plausible or accurate to what they say. Well, yeah, that, that, that's, that's true. true. I wasn't even sure. I didn't even. I didn't see what was the result of their trial match. Did they win? Oh. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk oh. about Port. Uh, let's just move no. on. Is there anything and else the, going on? Yeah, well, the, the third player, the, you know, is Miller. I mean, you know that uh, uh, he's going to be very, very versatile for us this year. And uh, uh, the big question is, does he get a, a run on ball? But you know, we've got to fit in uh, Brad Crouch as well. Um, uh, there's so many people now lining up for halfback as well and on the wings. And um, and one thing for sure, Miller is going to be in the side, but it's just a question of where he's going to play too. Well, so the benefit, I, at the moment, we're going to be sport for choice. Well, the benefit of having all those injuries last year is that we did get to blood a few players and we did see a few players uh, come into the side that may well have otherwise struggled. I mean, we still, you know, we can't forget blokes like Gallucci and Paholke and Lockie Murphy and those blokes. <laughs> Um, and we've we've also got a couple of guns coming through, um, so with you know touch would a fully fit uh, squad and a couple of blokes even you know um, he who shall not be named uh, could get a run in the under twenty threes game. So uh, at, it's going to be very interesting to see what Don's preferred twenty two is at least for the start of the season. Uh, really, only, the only conjecture as we just mentioned earlier is in the defensive posts. Um, but we've got a heck of a lot of runoff half back. We've got lots of options up forward. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens with blokes like Richard Douglas, uh, David McKay, even Riley Knight and Rory Atkins, um, because there's a fair amount of pressure for spots. I would have thought at the moment. Yeah, you know, you know a couple of names you named there. I think Douglas will probably make it, but um, and I think I'd like to see Riley Knight make it. He's, he's up. He's had a good pre-season this so far, and he's, uh, they, you know, it'd be nice to see him play a full season because at his best, he's a good hard player. You know, he's, he's hard as a cat's head, that boy. He's um, going so to have to. He's going to have to get more, of the, get more involved. I reckon he's still yeah, playing those. Yeah, you are cameos. right about that. Um, he and he's going to yeah, struggle. Instead of getting, instead of getting fourteen positions, he's got to raise that up to about twenty-four positions. Yeah. Isn't? And yep. Numbers like that, yeah, so you yeah you're hundred percent on the money about that. I mean, particularly if they don't play him in that defensive forward role, if they get him running through the mids a little bit or or up the ground onto a wing, uh, he has to get some more of the ball and and make him count because, you know, there's a couple of blokes we got McAdam and and Lockie Murphy and a few other uh, Ben Davis uh, pushing for spots up forward. Uh, we got young Tyson Stengel who would be looking for a second small forward spot. You would have thought. Tons of yeah. options at the moment. Yeah, and, I was going to say that there, there is that other that fourth forward as well, the McGovern position that is is really up for grabs, and so that's something that's going to be interesting and interesting to watch as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the, the club's been saying that it would probably go smaller though. That and uh, um, the interesting thing is that uh, Pikey, who's not generally uh, prone to making statements like that, said he expected both Chase Jones and McHenry would play games later in the year. Yeah, it's a big call. It is a big call, isn't it? Yeah, a somewhat surprising call too, I reckon. Uh, well, but if it's he's out of character for Pikey. But, he, but Pikey was in the paper like a, for, in for about a week solid almost, uh, whereas I think the club's realised that it made a lot of mistakes last year, getting him behind an iron curtain and trying to keep, you know, trying to hide any bugger-ups that they might have made. And, and uh, this year I think they've got on the front foot and... Uh, putting in a lot more out there for the supporters so that the supporters feel like they're being informed and not being duped. Now, just I didn't hear a whisper that... Sorry, sorry. Pete. I was just going to quickly say, yeah. I did hear a quick whisper that um, that Ben Davis is, a, is apparently training extremely well and um, very, very fit and very uh, very active and very uh, prominent. Has to be uh, close. Moment, Has so. to be close. So he he might be one to watch in the JLT. Yeah. Look, just a reminder before we push on uh, to people listening live, we are having Dan Kiley and Kim Ryder on individually, uh, probably after about nine o'clock Adelaide time. So, in about ten minutes, I'd imagine. Uh, Flick us uh, if you've got questions for them or things that you want to raise, want us to raise on your behalf. 
uh, send us a tweet or flick us a comment in the Spreaker chat or in the Facebook chat and uh, we'll try and get to those um, uh, questions as we interview both fellas. Uh, but right now, why don't we just get into some talk about the NFL <laughs> Bloody good win by the girls, I would have thought. Uh, undoubtedly the best uh, women's match I've watched since the AFLW begin, began. And, I, you know, I'm going to give a very early season sweep to the coach here. Now, I, he's said he wanted them to get back to basics and uh, do the simple things well. And I have to say, what just watching them, they did the fundamentals of the game, the best I've seen from them this year, and they were playing good team footy. Uh, it was I, actually it was a pleasure to watch, and um, there were some very very good individual uh, performances as well. I mean, uh, Marinoff, thirty three possessions. Marinoff, fantastic. And the one thing that she's added to her game this year, which she which she didn't really have in previous years, even though she's always been a ball magnet, um, is that she every time she she actually got about fifteen or seventeen ball received this time, which is. <laughs> A different way, but different for her. And the, she was lifting her eyes and putting them right on their chest. And many of our goals came from Marin, a burst from Marin off uh, going up forward. I thought easily best on ground. And she had some very good, stiff competition from some of the others, but uh, outstanding to watch, I thought. Yeah, look, we actually dominated some of the stats as a team. You know, uh, I think it was like 40 to 15 inside 50, or 41 to 16 inside 50s. Uh, 12 to 2 marks inside 50. We smashed them in centre clearances, 12 to 3, and uh, out disposed them by about 80. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that's that's a shellacking. 146 uncontested possessions and 113 contested possessions. That's uh, that's amazing numbers. And another one who, who I think had about 28 or 27 possessions was Hatchard. Now, Hatchard... It uh, was averaging something like about 14 possessions or something last year, something very low. But um, Clark's put her in the guts and put her on the ball, and she's a, a, she got a solid body, and uh, she is a very, very good midfield. And, uh, as, you know, so Clark, he, he's got a very good instinct for what to do with, with the players at his disposal. And uh, yeah. I thought Credit she, to... she had a trip. Credit to her too, because I th uh, from all reports, and I think Nikki's mentioned this before, she worked pretty hard in the off season to get her fitness up. Uh, she even sort of chips in in the ruck, I think, uh, as well. Uh, twenty seven touches. She does at times, yeah. Yeah, twenty seven touches through the midfield, um, uh, and I mean that just frees Marinoff up. And I think Marinoff's even made the comment that having uh, Anne Hatchard and a couple of others sort of stepping up through that midfield area has really allowed her to not always be the grunt player. Um, and hopefully as the season progresses and as Ebb's um, career progresses and she continues to get that assistance, she'll turn more into an inside-out player. She reminds me of a female Rory Sloan, honestly. It's just see ball, get ball. Yeah, yeah, that's fair comment. Fair comment. And we, uh, uh, Sorry, Don. I was going to say, we had, uh, we had four players make the AFL team of the week as well, which was pretty good. Well, the two skippers should have been in there as well. Yeah, so there was Randall uh, from the backs, uh, Phillips obviously up front, and uh, Hatchard and Marinoff both made it in the mids. So yeah. they, they yeah. were the four I was going to talk about because, uh, you know, um, it, what a shame that Phillips is the age that she is because I'd love to see her 10, just, and not because of she's not playing well, she's playing outstanding. Uh, but imagine if she had another, she, she was only, say, 23, 24 and starting her career now. You'd, you'd get, you'd have the joy of watching her for another ten or twelve years, because she is a smart football, a really smart football. And I, th I think it's just terrific to uh, to see the um, the level of scoring and 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 the, the run and carry that they're getting. It's um it's it's been really entertaining football for the last sort of five or six quarters that they've played. And um, when you've got that, it's very similar to the men's in the sense that when you've got that really defensive style of football and you're just um you can be in control of a game but only be one or two goals up and um, you just leave yourself exposed the whole game to the other side getting a little bit of a run. But if you can actually score and, and put a little bit of distance and that scoreboard pressure on, it just makes such a difference. Now, yeah, no uh, doubt about that. I'm leaving you guys to it while I get down on the phone. 
So uh, yeah. oh, okay. You got a few well, the other the other thing just to touch base with on um, with AFLW, and it's and I don't know whether this has been touched on in other weeks, but the uh, the way the conference system is set up uh, and uh, and the ladder. Now there's there's possibilities here that you know teams from Conference B are going to be able to get through to the finals playing with one or two wins, and clubs like the Crows might be missing out only with uh, one or two losses. It's, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a farce. Like, I don't, I'm not really quite sure how they drew these conferences up, but the, they are very, very one-sided. There's no doubt about that. That they basically you've got uh, one conference which is very, very strong with all the good sides in it, and then you've got the other the other side where, um, well, there's a was it, it's a, is it five or six in each? Yeah, uh, uh, five, five, five in each, and yeah, in those other five teams in the. Uh, weaker conference uh i mean between them they've played 15 matches and won two uh, three now so oh, Alton, three. geelong and brisbane have all won a game so they've got three wins in conference b and the kangaroos have won three Freo have won three north uh, melbourne adelaide and western bulldogs have all won two so it's it's just it's silly oh i don't know what's going on there <laughs> Oh, we got a bit of when one, when one yeah. rolling donkey's not enough, you need two. <laughs> who who was that bloke then? He was really good, ever. <laughs> yeah, he was sober. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-one days, Megan. Forty-one yeah. days and counting. <laughs> so uh, we've and, got uh, Dan on hold at the moment, and uh, we'll have him on shortly. But uh, please continue in the meantime. Yeah, my last mention was going to be Chelsea Randall and. Now, if Dickie was here, she'd have a crack at me for this, being the politically correct creature that she is, and you, never, you must phrase all your words correctly, but she plays the closest to the way a man plays, in, in my opinion, Chelsea Randall. I mean, she she takes a mark beautifully, just like, uh, it just looks like, if you didn't know it was a woman, just the way she takes it is beautiful. The body's right, she sets herself, and she's at the peak when she jumps up. Fingers spread, thumbs behind it. And she's got a lovely kick on her. It looks so. It just, with her football looks so natural, and she's got good height, and yet she can win the ball in the air. She can win the ball on the ground. And she tackles like a demon. And I think she's sort of an unsung star because the other people up forward are getting goals or kicking it right into the forward lines. But uh, she 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 really just saves the day back there. And I'm I'm wrapped with just watching her play. I, I really enjoyed it. And and the other good thing about the um uh, the crows. Uh, sides progression is you might you know a couple of teams have sort of uh, stalled or gone backwards but we've been right up there every one of the three years now you know the only game we've lost this year has been by a point to um a point to the reigning premier so you know we're not just we're not just resting our laurels we're moving forward and we're getting better every year it's really good to see yeah, I don't have got much more to add to that other than just that, you know, it was good to see that, uh, that the, the coach has really made a difference in the way, in the style of football they play, much more enjoyable to watch. And uh, overall, uh, you know, the girls couldn't have done much better, I don't think. So who have we got next week for the uh, for the girls? Uh, have we, sorry, I, I sort of zoned out for a minute there. Have we talked about Chloe Shear uh, and her little miss? No, no, about the suspension, yeah. That, that, it was a... Excellent tackle, but she just hung on a little bit too long, and then her old head went dong on the girl that she uh, tackled. And, and uh, I thought at the time she could beat a little bit of strike. Yeah, um, me too. Uh, and so it proved that she got a game. Um, I did say off air that it's a pity that it didn't wasn't for a Victorian team because there were two Victorians uh, reported, but they got their charges decreased so that they wouldn't get suspensions. But not well, for it, South Australian. Yeah, I mean, it's a big loss. So we're playing Fremantle, who uh, have been doing quite well, uh, and playing them up north uh, in your neck of the woods there, Donk. Um, so that's right. We'll be at uh, TIO Marara Stadium on, on Saturday night. Yeah, so, um, look, it's, it's a loss. It really is. It's um, something... She's a good player. That, yeah, she's a good player. So, um, look... Uh, let's hope for everyone's sake that uh, it's not too that we can cover her. I, I don't know off the top of my head who we've got uh, available to come in and take her place, um, but it is a big loss in my opinion. Could just might mean that Phillips might spend a little bit more time up forward. All right, uh, look, 
Without further ado, let's get into some member representative interviews, shall we? Now, I was a little bit disconcerted by the fact that we just got a bunch of echo there <laughs> when I got Dan on. So uh, I'm going to unmute him and let's hope, like Christ, uh, there's no uh, echoing going on here. Good evening, Dan. How are you? Good. How are you going? Very well. And no echo. I don't know what the hell I was doing on before. Can you uh, hear the boys on Discord? Uh, if someone else pipes up, I can confirm that. Hi Dan, how are you going? Yeah, Hi, Dan. I've got that. Oh, so, um, beautiful. I just wanted to, at the start here, so Donkey said up the top that uh, his vote's on the line. He's giving a brand yep. new definition to uh, Donkey vote this evening. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is 100%. Uh, Dapper Dan, 100%. We've, uh, we've put the pressure on. We want to see how you perform under pressure. That's how we're doing it. I did not clear this with anyone, so Fiend had no idea in the lead-up. So if you've had any good conversations with him, I don't want to ruin those. I'm just, uh, I've just been, uh, uh, it's just the, the spice of donkey you have to deal with tonight. Sorry, buddy. Dan, Dan and I, I, it's what we're becoming used to here with donkey, so uh, take it with a grain of salt, man. <laughs> can, I, can I just kick it off with a serious question, Dan? Um, this will, uh, is this the second time you've put your hand up for this, for running for this position? Yeah. I think it is. Yes. Can I just ask then, um, I'm just curious, uh, how did you go in terms of your numbers uh, the first time, how did you go and how have you gone about trying to, given this is your second go, um, the lessons I guess that you've learned from running the first time and how you've gone about building uh, your tilt uh, and having a second go? Uh, yeah, so the first time around uh, was four years ago, the first time that they had a member representative position up for vote. And there was, uh, both of them were open at the time. Uh, Mark Rusciuto and Rod Jamison got elected to those spots and have held them till now. Um, and uh, there were myself and six other candidates, I believe, along with Mark and Rod. And uh, none of us got told an official sort of count or anything like that. So I've, I've got no idea. I could have been a close third. I could have been a distant last. I'm not sure. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. So, so no feedback so the, at all? No, the, so the line out of the club at the time was they didn't want to discourage anyone from putting their hand up in future. I suspect, uh, you know, Mark and Rod probably had everyone pretty comfortably covered. Um, but, you know, it, yeah, it would have been nice to have uh, got that feedback. Perhaps it might have uh, given me a reality check and put me off running this time. But uh, I can only hope I did all right. Um, the, uh, this time around, I mean... Uh, the, the, the key thing was we, we did hear, I think it was almost two years ago now, the board said that um, they were finally going to move Rusciuto into a, a directly appointed position, which is probably what they should have done all along. But um, now yeah. that that was the case, there was the chance that uh, there was a, a clear run at it. So if ever you're going to put your hand back up, now's the time to do it. Um, I have, you know, I, I did set up at the time a few, you know, a bit of social media and stuff like that uh, four years ago and was sort of starting from scratch then. And I've, I've had uh, four years of interacting with Crows fans there. So uh, that's given me a, a, a bit of a jumping off point this time, which has helped. Uh, perhaps uh, last time I probably did get a bit too, too uh, involved in uh, trying to answer every different angle that Big Footy posters put to me. But uh, <laughs> You're uh, chasing, uh, chasing your tail there, man. Yeah, I've, so I've Spent a little bit of time on the forum this time, but uh, perhaps <laughs> didn't get quite as bogged out as I did last time around. That that's probably a very wise thing to do. Um, <laughs> that was actually a test. <laughs> well, you, well, you've had the, you've, you've had the advantage of having gone through it once, um, yep. Dan. What having gone through the process, what what do you think you've learned out of going having gone through that process? And secondly. Um, because you're familiar with it, what, what do you think that the club is looking for for them from the, the the candidate? So, I I don't regret going through the process last time. It was uh, it, uh, when I nominated, I knew Mark would be running. I didn't know Rod would, but um, uh, I, I still at the time I, I floated a bunch of things at that time that uh, we've we did 
did a pretty good job of actually picking up on. I, you know, it may have been things that the club was going to do anyway, but I'd, I'd like to think that I've shifted the needle a tiny little bit. We, um, uh, one of the things I was saying at the time was we, we'd just moved to Adelaide Oval and we had those graphics on the scoreboard that after you'd kick a goal where they would sort of pump fake crowd noise into the stadium and it was it was a bit annoying and patronising and sort of, uh, you know, made it, and, and that disappeared after I'd started saying stuff about it. I don't, I, I, they may have been doing that anyway, but it, it, um, it felt good to have, you know, seen that someone might have actually paid attention. And uh, it was also good to get a chance to meet a whole bunch of people. I've, uh, I, I don't think I've met any of you guys on the line tonight, but uh, every year at the AGM I have a chat to Nikki and uh, a bunch of other people who I've only come across uh, through through this process. So that was... Uh, a lot of fun, and uh, it's been good to get get to know different voices in there. Uh, You're a brave man, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what do you think that you would bring? Uh, that what would set you apart from other candidates? You think that you might add to uh, to the board, and what qualities do you think you could bring to the board? So, I mean, one of, my, one of my key things for originally running was to make sure that we at least had someone in the race who was, uh, you know, from outside the tent a bit. Um, a, a place to see that I don't know Kim or Paul particularly well, but it seems like all three of us probably fit that mould, and so this is going to be good, but I, I didn't want it to be another sort of anointed one comes up. So, so I, I, I like to think that I fill that role, but I, I do acknowledge that uh, Kim and Paul look like they probably can too. For me personally, um, I so I work uh, I work as a lawyer. I focus primarily on um, things like intellectual property and technology and privacy and stuff like that, uh, and, and media. Um, so for a footy club that's you know starting its own media thing and 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 uh, venturing into online broadcasting and buying esports teams and doing stuff like this, I, I feel like it can be a, a handy person to have around. And uh, I also feel like, so I'm, I'm 31, which is not exceedingly old, but I've been you know, working in professional environments for a decade. Um, but it, it does, does put me, I reckon, probably about a decade younger than just about anyone else who's on the board at the moment. Um, I'd like to hope that that's going to help me uh, if, if I get up and bring a slightly different perspective to things that, uh, you know, the Crows membership is notoriously ageing. Uh, you know, it, it, we've got a great group of members that have been around for 30 years and, and grown along with the club. But, you know, there's going to be people like myself who, you know, have started young families who've got to be the next generation coming through. And so you know, uh, to help reflect that in, in the board as well uh, would hopefully be something I can bring. Dan, just you mentioned, you touch upon the, the media and the, we did get some questions across Twitter uh, to put to the candidates tonight about um, about the media um, and the fact that uh, the AFC um, own their own media now and um, yep. how you see that, how you see that going forward and um, what benefits you see to the members um, uh Having a media that is now so controlled, um, and given that we, you know, the experiences that we had last year were not always positive in terms of how you know the, the whole camp thing played out. So just, yeah, uh, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, so um, I, I, I specifically mentioned uh, in my statement that got circulated to the members about wanting the club to be transparent. Um, I didn't want to dredge up the camp in that statement, but that was what I had in mind when I started talking about that. Um, Having our own, uh, you know, in-house media sort of uh, team should let us, should should let us, you know, make sure that the truth gets out there and uh, and get ahead of things. And yet, last year we seemed like we left a bit of a vacuum for, uh, you know, fake news to fill the gap. Um, so I, I, you don't certainly don't want a uh, sort of state media type operation that is. Uh, you know, exceedingly glowing, the only one that can have access to the players. But um, it can, I think it can serve a valuable role in, in actually making sure that the club, you know, is transparent and isn't um, only, you know, sugarcoating everything and, and, and letting only the little bits out. So I, I, I think it can be a positive, but that balance is not perhaps not quite right yet. And another interesting question really is um, you've actually... 
why I asked you and you answered very, very well is what you bring to the club. What do you think, as the members' representative, the members are expecting you to bring to the club? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Uh, so, like I said, I was keen to make sure that someone ran to say, you know, seventy percent or le- more than seventy percent of the Crows board is uh, is filled by sort of direct appointed positions, and it's only those two spots for member representatives. And you know, mm. while Rod and, and Rod and Mark are great people to have on the board. Uh, they don't really strike me as member representatives. Um, so I, I'd, I'd like to hope that uh, whoever gets on can use this spot to, to make sure they push the right issues there. Now, whoever it is, whether that's me or Kim or Paul, we we can't profess to share precisely the same opinion as 50 or 60,000 members because there's not going to be one cohesive opinion out of that. Um, I'm, I'm I, big footy, I, they would expect that. Yeah, well, I think big footy shows there's not one cohesive opinion. Um, yes, but but uh, the, my, my framing for looking at things is going to be, um, you know, look, we're, we are the Adelaide Football Club. We exist to, you know, do two things. We exist to play and win games of footy and we exist to be, you know, a club and with everything that comes along with that that's, you know, something that's sort of an intangible thing but, a, you know, a, a thing that's a benefit to members and to the community. And so, you know, my general framing of decisions would be, you know, is this is this something that you know helps us win games of footy or helps us, uh, you know, increase our it gives some sort of benefit to members to the the public at large. Um, and so, you know, that might be indirect. It could be that running an esports team means we get the revenue. That means we can improve our football department or, you know, make members pay less. But um, you know. There's no point owning an esports team for only say for the sake of owning an esports team. We want to, uh, you know, we, we we ultimately need to come back to one of those two things. So Daniel, um, just on the theme of of uh, trying to get the members' points of view across as varied, varied as they may be. Yeah. How, how do you plan to try and get some sort of a um, a feel for the general consensus? You know, sort of the middle ground and. How, how 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 are you looking to tap into the the thoughts and the feelings and the desires of the members, uh, so that you can take a, a genuine and valid uh, opinion to, at, to to the board? Yeah, so I think to play to my strengths, I think that you know the way that I'm probably going to be most effective doing that is is online. Um, that I've I've. Like I said before, I've enjoyed sort of engaging with different co supporters over the last four years, and and now that I've, I've sort of got these dedicated channels for doing it, um, that you need to be careful in doing so that you're not just getting the noisy voices or the you know the the one squeaky wheel. But um, it, it's it's I, I feel like I'm a, a very sort of accessible person. That there's so many different ways that. Uh, you can get in touch with me. You know, you send me a message on Twitter, but you know, I've, I've got stuff on Big Footy and a Facebook page and Instagram and all sorts of stuff. That if you can't get in touch with me, you're not trying hard enough. So I, I feel like um, staying accessible is is going to be one way, and then attempting to take the mood of amongst these sort of communities that I've I've become a part of online. I think that's that's going to be a key part of it for the way that I can probably best do that. And you're obviously uh, well spoken and articulate, um, but you, uh, if you were successful, you would be entering a board of some fairly uh, heavy hitters, uh, some people who have been uh, at the Adelaide Football Club in a variety of roles and at board level in some cases for a number of years. Um, yep. You know they have the benefits of uh, pre-existing relationships. Um, how do you feel that you're going to be able to, um, I guess, uh, have your voice on an equal footing as much as you can do in that kind of environment? Yeah, and I think I think to your point, it's not even just uh, the guys that have been there a long time, but even you know someone like uh, Kate e- Kate Ellis, who's relatively new to the board, is you know been in some pretty tough negotiations, I'm sure. So. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't anticipate that I would be day, day one walking in, flipping tables and saying, right, we're doing things my way now. Um, I think there's, there's going to be a bit to get up to speed on. There's all the things 
anything we've ever speculated about on, on the big footy or elsewhere, you know, sitting around with your mates, why haven't they thought about this? Why haven't they done that? I'm sure there's stories behind all those things inside. So I think there's going to be a process for whoever gets in to, to, um, to get up to scratch on that stuff and, uh, you know, then try and get their point across. I mean, I, I, uh, as well as Kim, you know, work as a lawyer, I, I understand sort of the, the processes. I, uh, you know, know what, uh, you know, what my, uh, what my rights and responsibilities would be and uh, would hope that uh, as, a, as a result, I can make sure that uh, I can't get too pushed around. But I suppose you never know you, until you get in that situation quite how that's going to go. Dan, yeah. a, really, a really, really important question that I have to ask. Um, yep. I'm just wondering what your what your policy would be in relation to club funding of social media podcasting. Just, uh, <laughs> I think I think we all would like to know the answer to that. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm not sure. I've, I that's not what I've had to get. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. We've got to go now, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, Look, there um, are a couple of quick ones, uh, and I'm sorry, Donkey, but uh, in order to give Kim equal time, we're going to have to wrap it up. But the, yep. In terms of in terms of common themes that I've seen on various social platforms and and whatnot, uh, uh, cost of entry and food and drinks at the uh, at Adelaide Oval, um, a dedicated members club room slash pub for Adelaide Crows members, and there was another one. Oh, and the bloody logo. Where do you sit very quickly on those three issues? Okay, rapid fire. All right, let's go reverse order. Club logo. Yeah, look, I don't love it. But I feel like um, that there are sort of bigger issues that, um, that you know, like a brand is about more than a logo. It's about how people perceive you and understand you and, and interact with you. And that we're more important to focus on those bits. But if, if there was discussion about changing the logo at a board level, I would be on board with that. Uh, getting some sort of social facility sounds like a very good idea to get people on board appreciate those sort of one of those easier said than done kind of things uh you you know you want it close to adelaide oval but you know that's quite premium real estate is it going to be busy the other days of the year so i'm sure that that's one of those things that i would i would love to uh, love the club to explore um but you know i i don't also i you know i appreciate there's a lot of sort of hurdles on that um and um I'm not going to come out and say, you know, I don't want to do the Donald Trump line and say, well, you know, we're going to build a new training facility in North Adelaide and we're going to make Port pay for it. You know, we need to actually be realistic about what we're going to achieve. Um, and the first question was the ticket prices and the uh, food and drink prices. Yeah, so the food and drink prices, as I understand, are primarily through the SMA. Um, to the extent that we can lean on them, I'm sure we should be. Uh, everyone knows they're too high. Um, I, I, what sort of levers we've got to pull in that respect, I'm not sure. The ticket prices is an interesting one because we are clearly at capacity, you know, in a sort of supply and demand situation, there's a lot of demand for Crows tickets. And so there would seem very little impetus on the club to, um, to drop that price. But that's, uh, you know, it does seem like if we're being told, well, we get where, uh, you know, I, I, last year at the AGM, I was asking why we're we doing an esports team, and we got told specifically it's all about the revenue. It's not about anything else, it's about the revenue. So if we've got ventures like that, uh, I would love to see that we could use that revenue to say, well, you know, guess what? We've been able to freeze your prices or bring down your prices. We've got Optus on board, we've got esports, we've got all this stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know it's a pressure point for some people. So, um, yeah. Fantastic, I think that's Dan. Enough. Beautiful. Look, as I said, we could talk to you for ages, and uh, uh, it's the second time we've had you on the cast, and both times yep. uh, it's been a very informative uh, discussion. So, look, we do appreciate your time. Uh, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, we wish you all the very best of luck in your endeavours, uh, uh, whether you be successful this time around or not. And I'm sure we'll yep. see you on social media. So, thanks very much, mate. Yeah, no, thanks, no, thank you very much for having thanks, me on. All right, so uh, gentlemen, you guys can discuss what Dan said while I get uh, Kim on the phone. Well, he seems very impressive, chaps, don't you think? Well, he's a very well-spoken individual um, who thinks very clearly, um, and uh, I, I think that his uh, principles of, what the, of the way he's going into the into this position is very good. 
Um, I think he would be, yeah, and we've still got to listen to Kim, but um, if, they, if, if he was the only candidate, I'd say we'd he'd be, still be a very good candidate for the position. What's the what's the current structure, Mackie? You know better than me. I haven't had a look at it for a while. But uh, is the is it? It's just one position that's vacant. Is is Jamo still occupying a position? Um, I'm not sure, but I thought and the, the, the people in the chat might know better than I have because I've been following that too closely. But I thought Jamo was going to be made into a permanent position. Uh, or whether I'm still not sure whether he's occupying a um, temporary position. When I say temporary position, one that's uh, comes up for renewal or re-voting. Clearly, uh, these guys will have a much better chance if they're actually just running as genuine members' representatives, which I, I think I, I tend to agree with, Dan. I, I think that the whole, you know, having a, a guy like Jammer, and this is no disrespect to him, and I'm sure he does a fine job, and, and uh, he was a you know, great past player and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of being a members' representative, I don't really think that that was a, you know, uh, that it was appropriate, to be honest. Yeah, the, the the chat's made it very clear. There's only the one two year old vacancy. Yeah, one not two year, one two year vacancy. So, so is he running against Jamo again? No, 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 no. This one is purely a members' vote this time. Right. Yep. Well, and, so was the last one. And, but, yeah, but no, but members' representatives. There's only but three nominees: was... Dan, Kim, and Paul, who we couldn't get hold of. So uh, okay. there's there's right. no oh. sort of club no football well, this time around. <laughs> and we do have well, Kim good. on the line now. So uh, welcome, Kim. How are you going? G'day, chaps. Yeah, good, good. Yep. Um, can, I just answer, can I answer the question just about the way the terms run? Jamison, I ran against Jamison last year. They run in two-year terms, so Rusciuto would have otherwise been up um, for nomination this time, except he's been flipped into what you'd call one of the AFL positions. Um, yep. So the AFL have a gold stamp of six of the eight spots on the board. Um, and the other two spots are voted on by members. Very and, good. Uh, the, the one, and then one from the members, are they uh, in different years, are they? Yes, yeah, they're in different years. Right. So, Kim, right, I guess... So one after the other. Kim, I, best, I guess we should start um, by asking for your sort of platform, I guess, the, your elevator <laughs> speech on, uh, on why uh, Adelaide Football Club members should vote you in. Sure. Look, I have been um, I've been a lawyer for 21 years. Um, I practice in uh, commercial litigation. I've spent a fair bit of time advocating people's positions. Uh, I think one of the things I'd like to do is represent the members and take their views to the board. Now, one of the interesting things that came out of your discussion with Daniel was, well, how do you represent the members? And there's a very broad um, very broad hymn sheet to sing from. I think it's important that um, the club hears from all the points of view and I think they need to have some way to collect up those views so that someone can actually say, well, look, here's what they think. There's lots of surveys and so forth, but um, from my perspective, I think this is another way to hear what one of their biggest income generating sources, which are the members, actually think about things. Well, the question um, I, I would ask you, Kim, is that, um, and if you look at Big Footy, you can see the uh, members' opinions can range from being very thoughtful to oh, almost yes. insane, almost insane. So, yeah. so there's this massive <laughs> range of different opinions. And yeah. the, the question I was didn't I get an opportunity to ask uh, Dan, is which about I will ask you is firstly, uh, how do you how are you going to ascertain what is the members' opinions? And secondly, what if the if the nucleus of the members' opinions was different to the one that you secretly held? What what goes into the board? Uh, look, that's a that's a a very good question. I think I think there has to be a way to at least have a forum for members to put their position. And I think the club should actually find a way that for that members' representative that so they can communicate with them in an open way, and they can hear what the members think. Now, it's no good hearing a complaint about the price of chips or the beer's 10 cents too high because the club's <laughs> got no control over that. But it's, yeah. it's things like, well, we're concerned about the direction the fitness program went last year or we're concerned about the way the club dealt with the media. I think they want to hear something from an outside voice and I think they need to hear it. Uh, Kim, can I just ask you, do you, um, are you um, active with social media? Is that something that you've... Uh 
that you've tapped into in your in your quest? Uh, I am. I'm, look, I'm. I think Dan's probably got a black belt in it, whereas I'm. Um, I'm a bit of a B grader. But I'm on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, I'm lucky enough to follow uh, Vardy Magic, who is uh, obviously an inspiration to all of us. He's a barometer. Um, <laughs> he's a barometer. Hey, he's a barometer. So I'm just going to interrupt uh, Kim but, just for a minute. Pete, your cable is driving me crazy. Right. Gotcha. Come on, Pete. <laughs> all right, Kim, keep going. Sorry. Uh, yes, yes, I'm out there. I'm on Twitter. Um, and I'm not so keen on Facebook, but I, I'm all over Twitter. Um and I find that's one way to communicate. But um, if people want to communicate with me, they can find me pretty easily on Twitter or Facebook. Um, I'm here. And I guess from that perspective then, Kim, what do you see as... Uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you felt that the club needed to hear uh, from the members. Is it your view yeah. that perhaps the club uh, is a little bit removed from its uh, loyal and faithful followers at the moment? I, look, I think one of the things that we probably saw last year when things got difficult is that self-appraisal was maybe not as fantastic as we would have liked because I just thought at times maybe everyone needed to stand back and say, hmm, is this a good look, a bad look? I don't know the truth of what happened. I've got no idea. But sometimes you've actually got to stand back and say, how does this play out and how does this... What's the look and feel of these things? So... Um, yeah, I, I don't think it hurts to have an outsider's voice in the mix and someone who's not afraid to to put an alternative position. And I guess one of the things that people who know me know is that sometimes when I go into settings, I'm not afraid to put an alternative position. And that's not always popular, but sometimes you've got to challenge the status quo. And I, and I guess leading on to that, and we asked Daniel this as well, is that uh, in a in a boardroom full of uh, pre-existing relationships, uh, long-standing yep. members and board members, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and decorated players, yep. how, how do you uh, foresee uh, your task in terms of getting even footing and even hearing at, at, at the board table um, and putting yourself across in a way that uh, you'll get these people's attention? Well, firstly, they've opened the door, so they've... Uh, they've said they want someone there at the table. So there's an opportunity and they are open to having someone come on board and participate. And I want to go on and contribute. Um, I want to lead some discussions. I want to raise discussions about things like the new facility and I think that's got to be front of mind. Um, and to raise some different points of view and say, well, maybe this isn't playing so well out there or why haven't we looked at this or are there some other options? Now, um, one of the things that you bring to the table in all of this is your own integrity. I'm not going to stand here and say, I can change the Adelaide Football Club overnight. There's no way I could do that. Um, but I'm not afraid to put an alternative view on the table. So do you what see do you your role as a... Sorry, one more donkey and then I'll shut up. Do you see yourself then as a bit of a devil's advo advocate in terms of the member representative role? Is, is that how you see that role playing out? A bit, yes, I do. Yes, and I think I think in any board setting, though, you've got to build uh, relationships with those around for the greater good because you're, you're there really to make the club a better place. You're there to make it a good footy club. Um, and the important thing in this is it's a footy club. It's a business, but it's a footy club, and that's the thing I care about. I'm one of the biggest footy nerds you'd ever wish to meet. So that's really my passion is footy and having a, club that wins premierships at all levels. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, told my very line. I was going to say it word for word as he said it. Couldn't agree um, with me more, Macca. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> they can all have a drink, the listeners. Uh, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I do think it's a, it's a very important role because uh, I've been on media board <laughs> and uh, it's nothing worse than when you've got a dominant character and everybody just going, yes, yes, yes. And, um, yep. you know, you see some pretty stupid decisions go through on that basis. And yep. it, it always does need somebody to challenge uh, anything that's perhaps slightly dubious and get it out in the open and get it resolved. Um, yep. The Look, question I was going to ask from, you that, Sorry. Yep. Can I, can I ahead, just say from my part, those who... So last year I ran, came second to Jamison. I probably always was going to. But after that, a number of the board members approached me at least to uh, meet me, speak with me, 
at the very least, to at least be very civil and say, oh, good luck, get a go and so forth. So they were nothing if not entirely courteous and welcoming. So I can't say a bad thing about the process last year and this year has been similar. Yeah, I know a couple of those people personally of having worked with them in various situations and they're good people um, mm-hmm. and very intelligent people as well. Um, yep. The, 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 the question we did ask, uh, Dan, and I think we, we should ask you the same thing, is what skills do you think you're going to bring to the board that maybe, maybe they might be there already, but in, personally, what are the skills that you think you'll bring? Look, I think in the member's representative role, you need a strong advocate. And I think, if anything else, that's the thing that I'm the best at. Um, I think I bring that to the table without fear or favour. Um, I spend a significant amount of time in court and I'm not afraid to have to put my client's position. And uh, I, I understand that sometimes that's not popular, but you've got to put that. And if that means that um, you don't always uh, you don't always get a popular response, well, so be it. But you're at least taking the position of those who bring you. Kim, I've just got a couple of questions that we get because we have, um, as you know, chat going along all the time. Sure, sure. As we ask, one of the questions we asked Dan, and we'll ask you again, is just how you, uh, what your perception of the AFC media, the, the fact that they've got control of that themselves now, and uh, how you see that playing out, what your thoughts of it um, are, and uh, whether you think that can be improved, and, where, and particularly given the circumstances last year, where we feel a lot of the members, I think, felt that we weren't particularly well represented um, with all of the stuff that went on. Um, and the second yeah. question that just came up was uh, just. Uh, um, some thoughts of yours about how you uh, would propose you know, perhaps engaging with some of the younger fans, I guess, and that, that may relate back to social sure. media. Yeah. Look, step one, um, one of the things that they have is an unbelievable production house down there. Um, the quality of some of the things that came out, like, for instance, when Sloan announced that he was going to take on another four-year contract, to see the players celebrate around that and to see some of the background stuff that's actually the kind of gritty stuff that people want to see. They want to see footballers in a football setting. Um, and that's, you know, that's the type of stuff I like seeing. The, the, the problem with that, though, is when it comes from the club, there's a view, oh, this comes from, this comes highly filtered and in a way that the club wants us to see it. We all think there's another story behind. Uh, look, I think Adelaide got a pretty awful um, crack in the media during last year. However, one thing is sometimes you can have those years where people are critical of you and you need to cop some of the criticism. Um, I just wonder if maybe we didn't cop it as well as we could have. Um, And some of it was completely out of line. So they they have a view, uh, as I understand it, that if they respond to every single criticism, they'd be on the radio 24-7. And that would be pretty boring hearing them responding to every single uh, scurrilous rumour. Uh, well, the only thing they did wrong, though, the last time was that, uh, and I, I don't think anybody could defend them in, in this particular score, is that they uh, actually put the shutters up and said nothing. And, uh, and you know, they, they could have clarified a lot of the situations. And I'm not saying repeatedly because um, you, there were some uh, Victorian journos which just kept on, regurgitating the same old stuff and making it sound 20 times worse than it was. But they could have come out and given satisfactory answers and, and removed all the speculation that was going on that was, you know, even to the point where you had Mark Williams talking about guys being strapped to trees and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah. uh, that's, Look, that was... That was and Brad, 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 absolutely. And, and Brad Burton's performance at that uh, press conference <laughs> only... Uh, it, it really just it enhanced the problem rather than solved it. You're a massive Brett Burton fan. Are you the one that loves Brett Burton? Uh, that would be the me. That would be me. <laughs> Sorry, just go make a say it. Uh, look, I'm not going to call him. You want me to say he's a dickhead, don't you? <laughs> I do. I do. No, that's I just, what I want. You just did, so I, that's good. I'm glad uh, you two enjoyed Valentine's Day together. <laughs> Uh, coming back to yourself, though, Kim. Um, yeah. You, you actually did mention something that um, uh, I think that a lot of us supporters would really, really like to see, 
Um, how how up the mystic are you that in the long run that uh, I, th- I think you're a supporter of it that there could be a city facility and uh, how do you think we'd ever raise the finances for that? Well, I'm a massive supporter of it. I think if ten years ago someone had said we'd be playing uh, the Crows would be playing regular well would be playing this season at Adelaide Oval. Well, let's say fifteen years ago, if you said the Crows would be playing their football at Adelaide Oval. You would you would have thought they were crazy given the impasse between the SANFL, the AFL, and so forth, and uh, and SACA, of course. But now to see it and to see where we're at, um, we've got to think big picture and actually think for the future. Look, I think there is a lot of space in North Adelaide. Um, I think that the club wants a highly professional training setup. Um, they didn't have too much trouble raising the funds today for the facility down at West Lakes. Um, to see the setup down at West Lakes at the moment is a shame, considering um, you know you look at Footy Park and think about those great state games and the great early days of the Crows. I, I think um, we are crying out for uh, an Adelaide-based facility where the players can get the highest quality training environment, so both footy sides can put themselves in a good position to win premierships, and also somewhere where the Members can go and see the history, buy a schnitzel, um, have a beer, uh, go and see, you know, go and buy a Guernsey or whatever. To see something like that, even a place to go when your side's away or on the road and you think, oh, why don't I go and watch with some other Crows supporters? I think it'd be a fantastic uh, step and um, uh, just would would bring some real focus because at the moment, Westlake seems a long way away from where the Crows play their footy. Yeah, totally agree with you, actually. Good, very good point. And we did ask uh, Daniel a couple of other questions uh, as well as that venue. Sure. Uh, uh, the main one, I think, is the price of beer at the Adelaide Oval. What are you going to do about that, Ken? Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you can bring that down a bit, you might uh, you might snag a few votes. Do you want me to see if I can ring John Olsen and see if the SMA can, can kick in? It might be a big step. They've got a bit on their plate at the moment, though. Yeah, how about the Adelaide Crows maybe subsidise the uh, beer prices at, <laughs> at the games? They've probably got the capacity for that, don't you reckon? <laughs> I do think one thing they should, I, and I said it last time, I think um, memberships cost a lot of money at the moment. I just want to know my club is being responsible with what I'm being charged um, because it's a big whack out of uh, people's pockets and it's... Um, it's expensive to take a membership for a year. It's great. I'm always happy to pay for mine, but it is expensive. I just want to know the club's keeping an eye on it. And I guess mm, the, the final question for Daniel is uh, from uh, that we asked Daniel was uh, your thoughts on the logo, Kim? Oh, it's okay. Um, I don't really dislike it as much as you guys sound like you dislike it. Um, I guess the We Flyers won. I actually don't mind the motto, if only because I guess you link it to the Phil Walsh because um, it was kind of around about that time and it was a bit of a uniting call at that time. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't mind the current one, but um, uh, can we bring... Is it Claude the Crow? Can we get back the early one with the Camry Crow song? The classic. Well, they actually played the Camry Crow theme song <laughs> after the girls won against Carlton the other week. Did, was that just left lying around at Optus Stadium? That's all they had left. When Red, yeah. Was that when Red yeah. Bone kicked the goal, first kick, in, uh, first kick in his career? Well, I think Triggy left his Walkman uh, in the admin building there <laughs> at, at Icon Park <laughs> and they were hunting around for it and that's the only thing they could find so they just plugged it in and whacked it on. Cool. I just had one other piece of mail for you from my mailman, uh, Captain Freo, to, just to let you know that Chase Jones was appa- apparently superb in the internal trial on the weekend. Yeah, big wraps. Ah. Big wraps. No. Look, Kim, it's been great to have you along. Uh, we we oh, do appreciate you, you. Yeah, we do appreciate you coming on and, and having a chat with us and giving uh, the faithful a bit of an insight into uh, what you stand for and what your platform is. Uh, don't forget, everyone that's listening, if you haven't voted yet, uh, you can get onto the Adelaide Football Club website and uh, follow the links and get your vote in. Kim, thanks very much. Uh, all the best, and uh, whether you, you win or Thanks lose, for having I th- me on. 
Well, look, whether you win or lose, mate, I think, uh, and same goes for Daniel as well. It's uh, it's a big it's a big step to put your name up uh, like, yeah. for something like this. Yeah, thanks, uh, so Jim. congratulations and, and well done Cheers. and good luck. Thank you. Cheers, chaps. Cheers. Cheers. There we go. That uh, was our interview with Kim. And yeah, I got to say, I got to say, I got to say, I got to say before you continue, Macca, that uh, it's just a marvellous piece of technological bloody no <laughs> to get that fucking happening. <laughs> right, continue. I've 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 self congratulated myself now. Well, well, no, well done uh, because I was about to say. Uh, you actually, if you let me speak, I was going to uh, congratulate you on it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I couldn't risk it. I couldn't risk it, Matt. <laughs> I was going to. Uh, no, I was going to say, it was just fantastic, actually. I don't know about the, the people listening. I hope they did. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And listen, there, what we've got there are two very, very good candidates, I think. And uh, both of them, uh, I thought, uh, expressed themselves very well. And uh, I think they're both people that want to be on the board for the right reasons and uh, I think that they, if they either of them got on there they would be a very good contributor so um, thank you again if you're listening uh, or reading or whatever to uh, Dan and Kim because I, I, I thought you, you guys were outstanding both of you and yep. uh, you know, may the best man win and I don't know who that will be but um, I know well, that Donkey's going to tell us oh, well, I did forget about that um, but from my point of view uh, Congratulations to the one of you who wins it, if, you, if it is one of you. And um, uh, commiserations to the one that misses out because you're both very good candidates. Pete, what were your thoughts, mate? I thought they were terrific. I mean, probably in the end, did, are you wanting us to choose one? I, I mean, I. No, not really. You know, just thought, well, you don't need to choose one. I, I, thought, they were, I, I thought they were both, um, you know, they're both, uh, you know, I mean. They're both lawyers, and I'm a lawyer, and to me, they sounded like lawyers. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> they just had that that manner. And no, I thought they both presented really, really well. And um, I thought that Kim was probably just a little bit more sage. Um, just that was the word that sort of struck me about him a little bit more. I don't know, um, down to earth, if you want Earthy. to put it like that. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to say. Yeah, so I just thought he was a bit more sage, and I t- perhaps a. If I was going to vote for one, I probably, you know, on the basis of those interviews, I might go Kim. I think, but. I think Dan, um, I, the only thing I did think is that um, Dan seemed to have a much better handle on the social media side of things. I think that's really important in terms of engagement. Mm, yeah, that's a really and good point. I think point, that but... you, can, you, can say, you can say, well, you know, I represent the interests of the members and you can make a broad a sweeping statement like that, but if you're not really well connected, um, then you know, I'm not quite sure how that plays out um, because I think that even though, yes, you get a diversity of opinions, if you, you know, if you can track sort of trends on social media, can't you? We know that. And uh, you can track trends. And um, I reckon Dan might just be a little bit better placed um, with uh, the way that he is uh, obviously well connected on social media. Would it be fair to say that um, Kim came across as a slightly more adversarial? Uh, Dan probably more collaborative? Hey, would, would that guys, be the, I'm yeah. going to have to disappear. My um, my uh, young donkeys are not very well and no, absolutely no good, tearing up the house. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donkey vote and uh, it's going to be Steve War again for me. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Wait. See you, mate. <laughs> I'm, probably not far behind. I'm probably not far behind. We're a bit of time tonight, but but, well, but time well spent because they were, they were terrific. Yeah, interviews. absolutely. Yeah, great, but, great work, Fiend. And thanks, boys, impressive. for coming on. Yeah, well, yep, look, I mean... The, Let's. Uh... No, I, th- I think you summed up well, though, Fiend. Um, in terms of the, um, was it you? He was saying about one more ad, 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 so one, to get ad- a bit more adversarial, and the other one a little bit more collaborative, perhaps. Yeah, I think that probably represents that Kim works in litigation, and and Dan obviously works in non-litigation. That was, yeah. I think that you, you can sum it up pretty well like that. Yeah. Uh, are you are you really saying that their their manners re- uh, re- <laughs> reflect where they work in, Pete? <clears throat> Quite possibly, yeah. yeah. Would be would it be natural, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, look, uh, been a really interesting cast tonight. Thanks to everyone on the chat uh, for contributing. Thanks for the people that uh, fired us in questions on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you were listening to Dan and um, Kim on our new phone line, and that means that for the remainder of the season, uh, not only will we be able to have our interviews again via the phone, but we may at some stages 
just open it up for uh, the faithful listeners to uh, perhaps give us a call uh, or give Donkey a call maybe. Um, yeah. But uh, we'll see how that goes. One but thing look, I want to feel is if some of the folks before they go, just as they leave, would just say who they thought did the better job. Yeah, it's on think, the way out. Ju- well, judging by the people on Spreaker, it's pretty 50 50, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I Bye think boys. Both, 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 uh, both men represented themselves well. Look, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us on the cast tonight. Don't forget, uh, we have uh, the Crows playing Fremantle this weekend up at Darwin. Uh, you'll hear us again next Tuesday night for Tuesday Night Live. Um, and in the meantime, thanks very much for all your support. Look out for us at aflcrowcast.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, and anywhere really you want to listen to us. So thanks very much, Pete. Thanks very much, Macca and Donkey. Uh, Thanks, Daniel and uh, Kim, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Good night, all. Cheers.